a, a really kind of an informal conversation today about dining. Um, this is something we do every month. And, you know, for the foodies in the, in the room, which I think probably you all are, you know, food is an important thing in our lives and Korean food. Uh, I'd love to hear more from each of you, what it means to you. It means a lot to me, um, having been to Korea dozens of times and traveled, uh, with a variety of people spent many days the first food first time i had sushi was in was in korea and i got sick uh from it uh because i didn't know what it should taste like uh if i would have done it later i would have probably stopped but i i got quite sick on my first visit there um generally though the food is really high quality and it's a really amazing similar to other cultures when you eat the original food it's typically almost always better and korea food in korea is is extraordinary we're very lucky that yelem ku who's with global chamber she's a project manager here uh, uh has uh, grown up there she's of korean descent and she is not available right now to speak but she did a video uh, for a few minutes to talk about korean food and cesar has it all queued up Let's listen and, and talk about it when it's done. Hi, everyone. My name is Yelim Koo. I'm the project manager at Global Chamber, and I'm so excited to be part of this Globinar Dining, Globinar Virtual Global Dining Korean Quiz and Event. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't join live, but I'm excited to share my insights and on Korean food culture and the global impact on um, the global business trends. And I hope you enjoy the session. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to reach out to me and share your thoughts and questions as well. Korean cuisines such as tteokbokki like rice cake with spicy sauce, with fish cake or bibimbap, like a rice with um, a bunch of vegetables and gochujang or ramen or pruldakbokgumyeon, which is spicy noodles, kimbap or any kinds of street foods. But today in this session, I would like to more talk about Korean barbecue. So Korean barbecue is the experience of cooking marinated meat over a hot grill found in the center of the table. Korean barbecue, aka, AKA Korean BBQ, refers to a method of cooking cuts of marinated meats. And you can marinate the meat in a variety of flavors like soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, gochujang, and others before grilling it. In Korean barbecue restaurants, there might be a gas or a charcoal, charcoal grill built right into the table, like you can see in this picture. And in Korean cuisine, the experience of making barbecue right at your table can be just as important as the flavor of the dish itself. So Korean side dishes, aka banchan, that might accompany Korean barbecue include kimchi, vegetables, rice, pajari, a green onion salad, and others. And you will find them in small bowls that in the center of the table, like you can see in this picture. And Korean cooks might serve panchan as a first course of sorts, and then to replenish the food throughout the meal so that the guests can enjoy it alongside the main course, which is the Korean style barbecue itself. There are a lot of um, components of a Korean barbecue meal. First is meat, which is the main component. So typically a Korean barbecue restaurant will feature one type of meat, whether that is pork, chicken, or beef. You will generally have the choice of which part of the animal you want. And while pork belly is the most common, the intestines, neck, leg, and skin might also be the options. Some, as you can see in this picture, this is called the sam. In Korean barbecue, sam is in the terms for the meat and the veggies after you wrap them in the leaves. We can use lettuce leaves, perilla leaves, sesame leaves, or a combination with the grilled meat. So basically, on top of the leaf, we put all, all different kinds of panchan side dishes um, and the meat and all these vegetables. 
And the sauce is also important. So to the meat and the vegetables, we add samjang, which is a sauce of the soybean paste and red pepper, red pepper paste. The sauce features umami flavor and complementary ingredients, but it shouldn't overpower the rest of um, the flavors in the song. So we usually put sauce, just a little bit of sauce, so it doesn't overpower the rest of the meat and other main components of the other components in the song. And the other component, which I would like to highlight more here in this session is drinks. So Korean barbecue with a traditional beverage like soju, a popular Korean wine or other light drink as Korean barbecue ingredients can be on the reach side. So as you can see here in the middle of the table, it's a, it's a Korean barbecue and the side dishes and here the soju bottles here. So drinking is a significant, very important part of Korean culture and business, and is often used to build relationships and foster friendship and companionship. And drinking soju, this is a soju with a green bottle, is a big part of Korean culture, and it's evolved from holiday rituals to becoming part of social and business events. Soju is a clear alcoholic drink made from rice, wheat, or potatoes. So there are um, different types of soju that you can have, which is shots. So soju is typically consumed in shots alongside Korean barbecue. And some say soju helps cut through the richness of the barbecue and creates ambience. And the different type of soju that you can have is somek. So soju can also be mixed with beer to create a drink called somek, which is the combination of soju and a beer. You can see from this picture. And somek is light and refreshing with a hint of sweetness, and the soju gives a subtle depth of flavor. And the other types of soju is flavored soju. This soju is pretty very popular in the U.S. A lot of friends of mine also love this flavored soju. Um, like soju shot is very, very strong, and it smells like and it tastes like very strong vodka. But this flavored soju is very, like, drinkable very it tastes like a non-alcoholic beverage um we have all different kinds of flavors including peach grapefruit yogurt apple leech lychee and etc so drinking is often used to build business bonds especially when doing long-term business with overseas partners and bosses often invite co-workers to after hours get-togethers which is called Peshik, and it is considered impolite to decline an invitation from a boss or elder. I mean, um, a lot of Gen Z and the nowadays people think it's toxic to be forced to have drinks even after work hours. So they're trying to um, eliminate that kind of for drinking forcing culture, but still implicitly we think it's impolite to say no to the boss when it comes to drinking. And there are strict drinking etiquettes rules in Korea, which are important um, to understand for natives and foreigners. Some, some, some examples are including don't pour your own drink. So it is uncommon to pour your own drink and you must wait for someone else to refill your yours. And respect your elders when receiving a drink from elder or the boss, hold the glass with both hands or one hand, as you can see from this picture your elbow supported and bow your head slightly when it's time to drink turn away from the elder and cover your mouth and glass with your hands so this is the drinking culture and drinking etiquette that you should be aware of when it comes to drinking especially when you're drinking with in the business settings so in the future if you have any um, opportunities to have business with Korean individuals or Korean companies, it's important to be aware that building relationship is an essential part of doing business in Korea. And relationships are developed through informal social gatherings and generally involved in a considerable amount of eating and drinking. So such gatherings also present the opportunity for both sides to discuss business in more relaxed and friendly surroundings, including drinking. So hopefully the session um, help you with understanding more about the Korean cuisine, Korean drinking culture, and thank you.
the drinking culture. Uh, th definitely. What What's your response? Uh, anybody have experience in in those areas and and uh, any thoughts? You, you know, you drinking or eating. <laughs> <laughs> Either. I think they yeah. go together. It, look, if you've had it, is that like sake? Uh, it's like sake, but it's um, what sake. is soju from? Sake is rice, uh, and soju has, I think, wheat or barley. Rice, both. wheat, or potatoes. Or potatoes. Okay. okay, yeah. So it's, but it's not vodka. Vodka's potatoes, right? So it's not, but it it's similar in the sense that it doesn't have a lot of taste, like vodka. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it's similar to sake, where sake has a variety of subtle tastes, and so does soju. But it it's that ilk. You know, it's not a strong taste. It's subtle. Personally, I like the banchan the best. That's my favorite part. Okay. All those little dishes with all those interesting things that you can taste. Uh, that's my favorite part of the meal. And every restaurant seems to, that I've experienced, has a slightly different assortment. The, and, and some of them have quite a, an assortment. Have you been to yeah. one where there might be over a dozen different little things to, to pick from? Haven't hit the dozen mark. Okay. <laughs> hopeful, hopeful. Okay, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. Uh, are you are you are you familiar with a lot of those different foods like the bulgogi and kalbi and the kind of the whole variety? Some of those things, and uh, we went to a Korean barbecue place. Very five butchers, I think it's called, somewhere here in uh, Silicon Valley, and they have staff who do the grilling of the meat for you. And they are amazingly efficient, just amazing at how fast they do it, how well they do it. it it's an art form in itself. Hmm. Hmm. Very cool. Anybody else have any thoughts? What, what did you I, like the most? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you, ladies. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jim, you've been to Korea a few times, right? Yes, sir. The, my thing was going to be most of my experience, and, and Doug and I were talking earlier, when you go to a restaurant there, there are two types of furniture arrangements. If you're a local, the table is about eight or nine inches off the floor, and you have to sit on the pillow. But they're getting more and more uh, chairs involved. But the local food is better than when you get on the chairs. It might be the same. I eat mostly street food. There, I, I remember mandu, which is a really, really good dumpling with, and you can change the inner parts of the dumpling. And I can't, I couldn't pronounce it then. I can't pronounce it now. There is a, a really sweet, crispy chicken. Uh, boneless that wow. we would call it chicken wings, but it was just yeah great. Those are the two things I remember on the street. Wow. Okay. Any alcohol for us? It does all go mixed together for sure. So, sorry, Linda. Uh, did you ask a question or did you have a comment? No, I was just going to fill space here. <laughs> I was going to ask you what your favorite uh, item or items were. It wasn't that first sushi that I had in, uh, <laughs> big, no, that was in um, Busan. Um, and the next day we had to drive to Daegu. It was a couple hour drive at least. And I was really sick and they went to a pharmacy to pick up something for my sick stomach. Yeah. And I, I remember that the, the container had, all, it was all in Korean. So I didn't know what it was because I was like, well, should I take this or not? But there was one word in English. It was the main ingredient, charcoal. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so when I saw that, I figured, okay, well, no matter what else might be in here, at least the charcoal. <laughs> could Filter it. And, <laughs> and as it turned out, sometimes things go from bad to worse. That day... 
I'm not sure they do that very often anymore, but once a month in South Korea, they would scramble the country in preparation for an attack by North Korea. And scramble means like sirens go off and the jet fighters take off and they're basically like in defense mode. So we're here I am kind of sick driving on the main highway between uh, Busan and Daegu. And suddenly these planes start landing on the road. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was thinking, oh, my God, like, I thought I was bad when I was sick. Now, like, <laughs> the country's being invaded. You know, I, I didn't I didn't know what was going on. And then they finally explained that this was something that happens. And don't worry, they were just getting getting prepared. The, that first salesperson I had was Bia Shin. And every single place we went to, we ate bulgogi with all of the banchan with like a dozen or 20 different ones. And, and he knew I liked all the different ones. But I really thought that the only food available in South Korea was bulgogi because he <laughs> loved bulgogi so much. When he finally was no longer the salesperson, I finally went to restaurants that had all sorts of other things. Although I did have bibimbap, uh, the, the noodle soup when I was sick. I remember that. So I did, I did have some knowledge, but, but it was very much. I also had one other uh, kind of notable food experience in South Korea, kind of close to where I was sick. You may know that historically South Koreans eat dog. And it's a particular kind of dog. It's uh, like a yellow dog that we don't have in the U.S. It's got a, a larger, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's a uh, not very okay, hairy. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. do, they, do, do they breed them to eat? They, they, they breed them to okay. eat. Like yeah, it's a okay. particular kind of a dog. And so one night uh, we went to a restaurant and I could hear dogs barking. And so we sat down and it was like off in the country. It was in a trailer, actually. And they said there were only two. There was no menu. You just chose the course that you wanted, either dog or quail. And so everything they they killed, either one of the other. And then everything you had from various appetizers all the way through entree were related to that food group. And so I did not choose the dog. I chose the <laughs> quail. And it was one of the best meals I've had in my life. It was spectacular on wow. every level because it was sashimi and it was prepared in a soup thing. And then they, right, they you know, cooked it like chicken. But you know how quail is. It just tastes so, so good. So um, I've had dog soup because it's quite popular in the winter time for, for energy. But that was, you know, like 30 years ago, I would not have it today. And it's much less popular. Uh, you know, the young people, I don't think have it uh, at all. So, so those were some of my uh, ex experiences and definitely Korean food is one of my favorites. You know, it's in a, it's in the top five. I think the variety of it and the way they cook it and having known B.S. Shin, who was the bulgogi expert, he actually took me to his house and we cooked it. And it, how it's marinated, they use Coca-Cola because the carboxylic acid in Coke breaks down the, the, the meat um, and makes it softer. If there's grizzle and things like that, it breaks all of those pieces down. And so, so he t showed me how to do that and how to marinate it. And you know, whenever I have bulgogi now, and having had it like in Korea where it's so, so good, um, it's still good here, but there it's really, really good. Uh, it's re because of the marination and the way they treat it. You probably wouldn't love the bulgogi that they now have at Trader Joe's, at least the one near me. Oh, the, Trader Joe's is beginning to have more Korean food. I, I did go to a place that claimed to have the best bulgogi on Venice Boulevard in, in Venice. And I, I looked at the place and I thought, well, this place will not have the best bulgogi, I'm pretty sure. But because they claimed it, I did try it and it was not anywhere <laughs> near the best. It was close to the worst. Oh, I've ever had. It really was quite That's terrible. That's too bad. How disappointing. 
Yeah, if, I guess you get outside of Koreatown or you get outside anywhere, right? And people claim whatever, you know, and, and that's just not the case. Um, so, Jim, you've been there and Lainey, you haven't been to Korea or, or Linda, you haven't been either. I've been only South Korea, but going through the airport. So that doesn't count. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. yeah unless, you ate some, unless you ate some of the food. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I had. But it was a beautiful airport, you know. But, anyway. Oh, you know, another thing that she did not mention that I would always bring home was ginseng tea. You know, because like you probably and what made me think of it was in the airport gift shop, uh, they always have like a variety of special ginseng teas and a variety of uses for ginseng, not just the tea, but a lot of different things. So if you ever go to the airport again, definitely you know, look at the, the gift shop and they will have quite a bit of that. Um, it's very popular for energy, sort of like the dog thing you know it's supposed to be you know give you energy in the winter time ginseng gives, gives you energy as well and i always really enjoyed it it has a good taste to it hey jim the uh interesting sidebar a little bit if you we all know ikea and how the kitchens are presented for this country if you go to ikea korea It'll be about 80% about the same stuff, but the stuff you're talking about on the marinade and everything else, there's a whole nother section in IKEA Korea of the gadgets and the cutlery and everything they use and the pots and pans for that stuff. Interesting. I mean, I was surprised when I started messing around with IKEA around the world that most of it will be presented the same. But since I, I've been in a lot of kitchens in my life, and interesting to see Saudi Arabia and those type of places who have different utensils in use. I uh, wish some of them would be here. The, that, that actually reminded me of, a, we had a, a, a good relationship with a number of different industrial companies. And there's a, there's, in Daegu, there's an industrial park that's up in the mountains again to protect it from attack really basically so it's you know defensible industry up up there and so there wasn't a lot of places to go to eat so you ate at the the company cafeteria and the the chopsticks that they had in a company cafeteria in Korea were uh stainless stainless steel i guess you know they were like really thin much smaller than regular chopsticks and metal <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and you realize that with chopsticks, when they're wood, particularly they're having them wood, there's a little bit of, you know, yeah. stickiness to them that allow you to be fairly effective. But when they're really thin and they're steel, <laughs> they're really hard, especially yeah, to pick yeah. up rice. It's, a, it's, it was nearly impossible. I, I thought I was good at chopsticks, but, but it took me practicing with those metal chopsticks to start to get a little bit better. <laughs> it's hard. I've got some chopstick trivia. There What's are that? chopsticks that are pointed and there are some chopsticks that are blunt in the end. What's the difference? Where does it come from? What, the blunt ones are from China, aren't they? Yes. And, it's, and it's, the sharp ones are from Japan. Japan. Because they use them as knives. Wow! Really? Okay, yeah. that's that's interesting. I've seen the sharp ones. I think um, so. Sim similar thing. If you ever get a chance, try try it. It's really hard, especially to pick up rice. It's one of the reasons why I'm sure that Japanese rice is sticky rice. Sticky. Right? It has that <laughs> stickiness because it's impossible right. <laughs> if it's not sticky. Yeah. You know, it, it, in Korea, they do have the japonica rice as well. Um, it's a you know particular kind of rice that makes it sticky like that. Um, so in Japan, it's very popular, and Korea grows the same kind of rice, but it's it's japonica rice. I think they 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 probably call it something else to, because of that whole thing between Japan and Korea. A little bit of animosity. Mm -hmm. Is that is that rice black rice by any chance? Because I'm starting to see that more in sushi bars now or sushi restaurants. Okay. I haven't seen black rice, um, but I've seen the different colored rice, usually like in Thailand and Indian food. So that that's new to me, but it's white. 
So the 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 the, the okay. good sticky rice, japonica rice, at least the original is is white. Um, so the and the Japanese revere rice so much that the the Akita prefecture in northern Japan, uh, Akita Akita Bijin means akita beauty so what they say is that the rice in akita prefecture is the best rice in japan it's the stickiest and the most tasteful you can grow J J rice japanese rice anywhere but in akita prefecture it's the best and the women in akita are more beautiful than anywhere <laughs> else in japan and so akita bijin means beautiful person from akita oh. it's because of the rice <laughs> the and rice you go to is Venice, tastier. it goes to the korean restaurant there <laughs> which, which, I, I, i'm throwing this out the doug i cannot remember where i found them i got one pair left on chopsticks uh not worry about the color but the last the bottom three inches has got little notches all oh. the way around it. Wow. Okay. I, I can't remember where I picked them up. So if you see some, buy them and get okay. good from me. There's a, uh, about the bottom two, three inches. I can't remember. I got one pair left. Has little notches for that very particular reason. So every place has an Asian market. And I know, Linda, the that Asian market that's out in Mesa, I guess, um, yeah. it, is pretty good. And they have things like that. You know, in L.A., it's amazing. <laughs> you know, have happen. you been? Have you been in the one in Mesa? I've never seen yeah. a place that has thousands yeah. of soy soy sauces and whatnot. <laughs> and that guy who owns it has two places in San Francisco. Oh, That's I did. Started I out, I yeah. okay. East Bay, yeah, East Bay and the Peninsula. What? Anyway. Which? Which? What's the name of the market, Linda? I'm going to ask. Um, Keep talking, people. I'll because there are a couple of mar Asian market, big Asian markets that have opened up in Silicon Valley and San Jose. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm, no, mm, I just had it. I'll, I'll know in a minute. Lele is another one that's here, but uh, that one begins with an M. Uh, uh, you can always text it later. I will. I will. <laughs> Let me look it up. I probably have it in my. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but I know in, um, they have a lot of Japanese markets in LA, but I'm not sure what the Korean markets are. It's probably I'll do some investigating. Uh, um, I make the assumption everybody here has gone to Japanese restaurants and see the big ships with all the sushi on them. Yeah, yeah. Not for a long time. Wherever you're at, that that if you have more than four or five Japanese restaurants, you can go to a Japanese restaurant distributor and buy them right there. Mikong is the name of the uh, whole shopping center. Oh, Mikong, yeah. yeah. So I, I thought it was Philippine owned, but Mikong is Vietnamese, right? So um, so I'm not sure who, own, yeah. who owns that, but it's not, um, I'm not sure it's either Japanese or Korean. I think it might be Filipinos that own that one. Well, I went in one time, um, and I wanted to photograph the whole vegetable area. So I said, can I do that? And they said, no, you need to talk to the owner. And he happens to be in the restaurant across from here. So I had a conversation with him. That's the only reason I knew that he had restaurants here and in uh, San Francisco. I think this one is bigger, but they have the two there, East Bay and then one in the uh, avenues. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Cool. Well, um, does anybody have anything else that they like to share, either about Korean food or anything else? Any 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 needs you have, or any anything else you want to share? No, thanks. I wasn't Not hungry till we started this. Yeah, really. Uh, thank uh, the young lady whose name now fell out of my brain who put the video together. That was really <laughs> nicely done. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, uh, y e l i m yelim ku, um, so uh, yeah, she's she's really really good at that. It was one of the better ones that we've done. We've had some people. We did one on the Philippine food. I remember that one was very memorable, and there have been some others. I think we've done Korean food a few years ago, and 
uh, Dr. Yun did that one, and that one was also very good. Um, so we've had some different different presentations that were outstanding, and so so we'll see what comes up uh, in the future. Thank October, you, guys. Oktoberfest. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Opon, you're saying, um, send, is it possible to send the video? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, yeah we'll we'll get that to you for sure. Thanks for thanks okay. to all of you for taking thanks, the time. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thank you.